Welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Today I want to talk about a particular golem character called the Nexus Golem. We encounter this guy in DA2 where we go into some dwarven ruins and fight a gauntlet of enemies, which is exactly what the golem calls it. The gauntlet is past. Only a shape rate brings the light. This golem says a few unique things. The stone lives beneath or lay. That dwarven saying there means, at my side, find your way in the dark. He also says the stone lives beneath or lay. That phrase is found on an axe belonging to a dwarf called Tug, who I just made a video about. My theory is that it's a secret code among dwarven spies to identify one another. The fact that the Nexus Golem says it is what makes me think the phrase is associated with Kel Sharak rather than the Shopper Tall, because Kel Sharak wasn't lost until after Golems were created, but the Shopper Tall split off from the Dwarven Empire well before that. The other phrase on Tug's axe is Mathasgar na Fornin Patat Isatanal. Mathasgar na Fornin Pasalwoka Atrust. Not quite the same. I talk more about that in Tug's episode, I'm not sure how these phrases relate beyond the beginning, but it does appear these are sayings or idioms of some sort. Maybe they're related, or maybe they just share a small similarity. Like being a fish out of water, having bigger fish to fry, there being plenty of fish in the sea, and being a big fish in a small pond. Amgarak tapped the blood, spilled within the stone. How does this golem know that? We were once more than we are. How does it know that? It stands to reason he's referring to when dwarves were connected to the titans, but how could he know that? What even is this place? Why is he here? Why does he trade for our currency? Let's look at his wares, maybe there are some answers here. He has a few unique items. Where does he get them? A few that stand out are Architect's Legacy and Father's Hand. Both are only available if the Warden Commander sided with the Architect. They have no descriptions, but their existence alone is suspicious. Another one of interest is Barden's Folly. In short, a dwarf named Barden made a ring for a woman he loved who was married to a noble. Well, Barden disappeared shortly after, and the woman left Orzammar. Some say she made it to Orlais, others say she died in the deep roads. Either way, the ring was eventually found near Ostwick. That may just be a tale about the ring to give it more value, but it's clearly enchanted. If they wanted the ring to seem more valuable, they could have come up with a better tale than this random dwarf made it for a married woman. They could have said it belonged to a dwarven hero or something. Yeah, they couldn't make it too crazy, but there are plenty of believable tales that would have been more enticing than this. So the story seems at least partially true. But how did the Nexus Golem get it? Who else came here to trade and didn't get killed by the various monsters? Or did the Golem only come here recently? This guy is weird. Additionally, he has a belt of woven elf hair for some reason. No real description on that. And he has a bow that appears to be a weapon of assassins from the Anderfells. The Nexus Golem may have gotten it there, but there's really any number of ways a weapon could find its way from the Anderfels to the Free Marches. That's not that weird. What is weird is Sundering, the mace of Lothias Dwarfson, who you may know from the tale of the Ash Warriors. According to Alamari legend, the weapon was not forged. Rather, it hatched from an egg high up in the mountains and was carried by birds to Lothias Dwarfson as a wedding gift from the Lady of the Skies. After his death, Lothias was taken to Orzammar to be buried as one of their own, and his mace was meant to be with him. However, it couldn't be found. Some say the birds took it back and would later deliver it to a hero in need. Maybe the Nuxus Golem took it way back then? Who knows? But the reason I'm talking about this is because I want more dwarven stuff, and this is an excuse to talk about it, and we're also pretty starved for Dragon Age content in general at this point in time. So I guess let's talk more about what the Nexus Golem could be, that he has all this information and speaks so cryptically. Shale retained their personality, or at least doesn't have a strange and cryptic one like the Nexus. Golems usually require a control rod to function. I guess a master is decided by a phrase spoken by the holder, 
and the golem becomes bound to them. When that master dies, the golem enters a paralysis until a new master comes. I can't recall any time in the series a control rod has been broken. Even Shale's worked, it's just that it didn't affect her after waking because of Wilhelm's modifications. So if a control rod broke before the master died, I'm not sure what would happen. Although I guess Shale is still free if the warden dies, so... I would guess that if a control rod broke, some would be insane, which would make sense since their last living memory would have been having molten lyrium poured over them. And others would just shut down, like basically dying. Then again, maybe they just go back into paralysis... forever. Which may as well be the same thing. Unless they are still conscious, in which case, that's a fate worse than death. Well, maybe the Nexus Golem's control rod broke, or its current master set it out to... do whatever the heck it is he's doing. Depending on how long the Golem has been around like this, the master may be immortal, which kinda says something. Maybe it's Xenon. I mean, that would actually make sense. Alternatively, it could be a sidereal magister, it could be an ancient elf in Uthanera, could be a spirit, I don't know. But it's an interesting question. Who is the Nexus Golem's master? Let's talk about the name a second. Nexus Golem. This sounds to me like it's not just one dwarf in there. Maybe it has two or more consciences. Maybe it's even controlled by spirits. Or maybe the dwarf Caridon used to make it was possessed. Can dwarves be possessed? I mean, like if a mage guided a spirit in, would that work? They can go to the Fade in the right conditions, and this Rock Wraith in the Primeval Tag was possessed. They're a lot like golems. So I guess maybe the golem could have been possessed later? Okay, I'm really just spitballing ideas here. We have no, almost nothing to go on. This guy is weird. That's all I can say for certain. So, yeah, I guess that about does it. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, Tala Nadas.